Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you that this is the day that you have made. And, Father, we choose and purpose in our heart to rejoice and be glad in it. And look at this day as an opportunity, Father, to do great things for you, to destroy the works of darkness, Father. We thank you that your word is alive inside of us. It's living. It's powerful. Father, we submit ourselves to you and to what your word says. Father, we delight in doing your will. And, Father, we yield ourselves now as instruments to the Holy Ghost this morning. Father, I ask that you speak through me today words that need to be spoken. Father, you know the things that we need to hear. So I yield myself as an instrument, my mouth, my voice to speak what you would have spoken today, Father. For your words are life, they are truth. And they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. And Father, I thank you that all that we say today would bring glory to you. Father, would cause us to walk the walk that you have desired for us to walk, Father. To accomplish the things that you desire and want for us to accomplish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, let's keep, uh, keep um, well, it's good to have Matthew back. We've been thanking the Lord for your, for your complete and quick recovery. Um, also, Kathy Ledger, let's keep her. Thank the Lord. I mean, I prayed with her, so we don't need to pray again, but let's just join our faith with hers that she's uh, rising up strong, got some kind of virus that the enemy tried to bring on her, but uh, that she's strong in the Lord and continues with her confession of faith. Amen? And, uh, and, and fight the good fight of faith. That's, that's exactly what it is. And, uh, and she'll, be, she'll be strengthened, rested, and come back soon. Amen? So when you think about her, just thank the Lord for that as well. So glory to God. Well, we've been a lot of talking, a lot of good stuff going on here in healing school. And, uh, and we've been uh, discussing a lot of things about, uh, about our walk with the Lord, our surrender to God, our, uh, our, our taking our thoughts captive, and, th and the idea that we are in a battle, that we're in a conflict, right? And, uh, and that uh, when you walk by faith... It doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials. It means walking by faith, you learn how to overcome your conflicts and your trials. And the minute you declare those kind of things, the enemy's there to challenge us. But, um, but we're not afraid. We're not moved by any of his challenges because greater is he that lives inside of us than the challenges that come at us from this world. So no weapon formed against us can ever prosper. So as conflict comes my way, I just dig deeper into the word. And I, and, and, and I come up, and on the way over here, uh, the Lord, this, just, this word came up in my heart to wake up swinging. Get up swinging. You know, don't don't lay down. There's no there's no time to cower and complain and why. Just get up swinging. Right? How do we get up swinging? Speak the word. We, we say what the word says, regardless, regardless of any other thing. Glory. We swing because the word says swing. We, 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 we fight because the word says to fight the good fight of faith. Right? So, so we're not moved by that. And so this morning, well, well, uh, I was praying at home, and I, I got up early and was just praying and seeking the Lord uh, about today and, you know, just, just things in the church, and, and uh, this, this came up in my heart about we need to be on the offensive. We need to be on the attack. And, and so, so, uh, so, so we need to be aggressive, not regressive, not, 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 uh, not, not defensive, but offensive. And, uh, and the Lord just spoke to me so clearly, the Holy Ghost this morning, about getting up and physically going through the motions and saying it out loud, that devil, I am coming to cut your head off today. Uh, those words <laughs> came up in my heart. Now that sounds barbaric and that sounds like that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it is he's the enemy there's no love for the enemy you understand the battle 
is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the rulers of the darkness of this age, this world that we live in. If we don't aggressively get up swinging, pursuing the enemy, then he's going to take advantage of you. And I got such a realization and a revelation of that this morning. Um, we, we, if we're not aggressively attacking, then what are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing nothing. And it's hard to hit a moving target. But if you're sitting there on the defense, hoping that the devil doesn't notice you, and hoping that he'll just leave me alone, you are destined for destruction. Do you understand that? We become zero threat to him. We become easy picking. But if we get up and we purpose in our heart that today, devil, I am coming after you. You're not pursuing me. I am pursuing you. Now, that doesn't mean that we're devil conscious and we're, no, we are ready. I'm looking. If, you, if there's anything that gets in my way, I'm here to storm the gates of hell. I'm here to defeat my enemy. This is Bible. This is scripture. This is how people of faith are to act. Now, sometimes when you talk this way, you get accused of being arrogant and you know, well, who do you think you are to talk? I don't speak this way because I'm something special. But I am special because of who lives inside of me. And I speak this way because the spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. So I'm commanded to act this way. So it's not pride. It's not arrogance. And it's always the ones who don't walk by faith are the ones that say that about you. <laughs> You know, because they don't understand. But people of faith, they understand that language. And when they hear that language, it's like a pep rally. And they get excited. They're like, yeah, yeah, let's go. It's like the taste of blood. We're going. We are going. We are going. And that's, that's how we overcome. That's how we, we got to get up in the morning and let the devil know I'm not hiding. I'm not on the defense. I'm not reacting. I'm attacking. I'm coming after you. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I got the sword of the spirit in my hand. I have got the sword of spirit. I have put my armor on. I am battle ready. I have my battle dress uniform on. And I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. That's the attitude. That's a faith attitude. That's an overcoming attitude. That's a victorious person. Faith attacks. Fear reacts. We need to be proactive, not reactive. Not sitting home in fear, hoping that I don't have to deal with any type of a battle today. Hoping that the, that the devil can't find me. You know, in the natural realm, fear is easily sensed. Right? right? A horse knows if you're afraid of it. Dogs know if you're afraid of them. And what do they do when you're afraid of them? They attack you. They take advantage of you. Do you understand that? Fear, fear is being reactive. Fear is timid. Fear is intimidation. Isn't it? And so if, if we're in fear, the enemy senses fear. He looks at that as something that he can get a hold of. But if we, he also knows faith. <laughs> and when he sees faith, what does the Bible say? He runs. 
he runs. Because faith attacks. Faith doesn't sit idly by waiting, watching, and hoping. Faith is actively pursuing the enemy. If you're in faith, you're pursuing the enemy. If you're sitting home, trembling, intimidated, you're in fear. Faith attacks, Spirit of God, write it down. Faith attacks, fear reacts. We need to be proactive, not react. Fear sits home. I said, hoping that the devil won't notice you and kind of leave you alone. That's what it does. Fear will sit home and do that. Faith gets up, gets ready to go, and pursues the enemy to slay him. So every waking moment, when our feet hit the floor in the morning, that's why the Spirit of God said, get up, wake up, swinging. Get up, wake up, get ready to go, because you're on a mission. You are on the offensive attack. You're not defending anything. You're attacking. We're attacking. We are taking ground. That's exactly what we're doing. We are taking ground. We are storming the gates of hell. I said it this morning, devil, I'm, I'm coming after you today. And just like David cut off the giant's head, I'm ready to cut your head off. And I mean it. And how do I do it? I don't take a sword out and start swinging it at things. Okay? I use the word of God. Philippians tells us that he was... Uh, made a public spectacle that he was triumphed, paraded around. Jesus went to hell and made a public display of him, triumphing over him in it, destroying the works of darkness. Jesus did that. He went there and did that for us so that we can be an offensive, attacking faith person. Not to sit home, Hoping that the devil doesn't, you know, ooh, don't get too, be careful what you hope for. Be careful what you wish for. The devil can hear you. He can hear me. He hears me loud and clear. And guess what? He's afraid of me. And he's afraid of you and you and everyone else in here if you'll do what the word says. If you'll step up, get ready, and start swinging the sword of the spirit at him. The Bible says that he will flee. James chapter 4. Let's look at it. Now, I'll give you a bunch of scriptures, but I just, I, I, this is so strong in my heart that we need to be, if we are a person of faith, then we are not sitting by doing nothing. We are actively pursuing the enemy. Now, we're not pursuing people. We're not judging people. We're not going against people who, who don't know any better. We are pursuing the spirit behind it, the spirit of wickedness, the spirit of darkness, the spirit of strife and rebellion and deception. These are the things that we're fighting. Our battle is not flesh and blood. Now, flesh and blood, you'll see the results of yielding to that, and it'll irritate you, but that's not the problem. That's a, that, that, that's a byproduct of a spiritual problem. And if we'll go after the heart of the matter and destroy the works of darkness with the word, these physical issues will straighten out. So that's why I was sitting on my couch and I was reading, and it just came up inside of me. You need to not just sit here and say, Father, I thank you that this is the day you have made. What would you have me do today? Stop. We don't need to say that. We know what we need to do today. The Spirit of God, it came up so strong in me that you need to get up and go after the enemy. You need to go attack the enemy. Find opportunities, look for opportunities. If there's strife, if there's things that are going on, if the enemy's messing with your family, go after him. Don't sit there waiting for God to do something for you. He already did something. He gave you the sword of the Spirit. He, gave, he made us more than conquerors. This isn't an attack that we could possibly lose. There's no losing this attack. This offensive wins every single time, every single conflict, every single battle. 
And we recognize that, that when you're in a battle, there's going to be some, there's going to be conflict. There's going to be some scrapping. There may be some bruises and some cuts, right? Because we're in a battle. That's what fighting is. But we win. We win. No matter how much. I may be knocked down, but I'm not knocked out. I may be knocked down just momentarily, but you can guarantee that I'm getting up. I am get, That's it. I am getting back up. I'll look him right in the eye. You may think you got the upper hand. I could be bleeding, and I'm going to look up and say, I'm winning. I'm winning. I still have my sword, and I will still swing it at you. That's faith. That gets results. That's right. It's calling things that are not as though they are. Even when it looks like your symptom is getting worse. And the devil will lie to you. And there's a fight right there to take that thought captive. Well, look, you've been fighting the good fight of faith. You've been coming to healing school. And look, you're sick. You must really not believe. No, I do believe. <laughs> That's why I'm fighting this battle. That's why I'm here. And devil, I'm coming after you. Glory to God. I'm coming after you. Glory to God. I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I'm not running from you looking back this way. Uh, you're looking back at me because I'm on your tail. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Uh -huh. So James, Thank you, Lord. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I have several scriptures, several examples from scripture that we're going to look at. Coming after. We got to see ourselves as attacking the enemy. You got to see yourself as a warrior going after the enemy. Not one being pursued, but one pursuing. Amen. We're not being pursued. We're not being pursued at all. You know, as, as it's easy, like I said, fear, fear will cause you to be the one to be pursued. And you can sense fear and you take advantage of people who are afraid. But growing up, you know, you're always taught, fight back. You have to fight back. You can't just sit there. If you just sit there, you're going to get beat. You got to fight back, you know. And when you turn around and face your, your enemy, and you go after him, guess what? He may stand there and say, all right, bring it on. And guess we win. You want to stand around and fight? They're only going to take a couple shots and you're done. But if we refuse to fight him and fight the good fight of faith, then he wins every time. And we don't walk in what God has for us. And it's nobody's fault except our own. We're the only one. That's another thing that the Spirit of God said to me. We are the only one that stands in the way of what we're supposed to have. There's nothing else that literally stands in the way of you pursuing what you're supposed to have except you. Is there any other thing that can stand in the way? Think about it. What is the only, the only thing that can ultimately determine whether you do or you don't is you, nothing else. People may influence you, you may have this thought, that thought, but when it comes down to it, you're the one that makes the final decision. So if we do without, it's because we have yielded to wrong thinking, we have yielded to fear, and we choose not to go, not to pursue, and not to be blessed. It's no one else's fault but our own. But, uh, James chapter 4, James chapter 4, and we'll start just in the first verse. It says, where do all the fights and quarrels among you come from? They come from your desires for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. You want things, but you cannot have them, so you are ready to kill. You strongly desire things, but you cannot get them, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. And when you do ask, you don't receive it because your motives are bad. You ask for things to use for your own pleasures. This is what, this is what uh, Paul's writing to. 
Verse 4, unfaithful people, don't you know that to be the world's friend means to be God's enemy? If you want to be the world's friend, you make yourself God's enemy. Don't think that there is no truth in the scripture that says the spirit that God placed in us is filled with fierce desires for us. But the grace that God gives is even stronger. As the scripture says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. So then, verse 7, submit yourselves to God. Submit yourselves to God. Getting up in the morning and, and making that declaration that I'm going on the offensive and I'm coming after the enemy and I'm going to attack with my sword of the spirit is submitting yourself to God. And it's also, it's also an act of humility. Why is it humility? Because we're recognizing that we don't have the power in ourselves to do this but we're submitting and yielding ourselves to the one who does. And that's why the, next, the rest of the verse continues along these lines. So then submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will run from you. He will run away from you. But there's no resisting with no submission, without submission. You cannot resist if you cannot submit. Does everybody understand that? Too many Christians are trying to the resist part and they're failing miserably because they have not submitted to God. True submission is complete surrender. I yield to your battle plan. I yield to whatever you say needs to be done to accomplish the task. I yield to you. I yield to you. What does that mean to yield? When we're yielding to God, we're yielding to the Holy Ghost. We, we, are, we are essentially giving up what we think or have to say or do, and we're turning it over to you. We're yielding to him. We're giving him the right away. We're giving him the right away. So we have to submit to God. Then once we're in submission to God, then we can confidently resist the devil. Then we could get up swinging. And we can get up and say, devil, I am coming after you today. I am not hiding. I am not going to be quiet. I'm not going to be hidden so that you can't, you know, I don't want to ruffle feathers. No, I do. I do. I do. I want to come against the spirit of strife in families. I want to come against strife in the church. I want to come against sickness and disease that are destroying people. I want to come against lack and oppression and depression. I'm coming against it. I'm not sitting. Just because it might not be affecting me, it's affecting others. And so I'm going to fight against that. I'm fighting against those things. I'm fighting against deception. I'm fighting against symptoms that may be trying to present themselves in my own body. I'm not going to just sit by idly and let it happen. I refuse to do that. I refuse to do it. One thing is for certain. If you do nothing, you're going to lose. We win. And I'll tell you what, if I'm going down, I'm going down swinging. But I'm not going down. <laughs> but none of us are going down. But you need to be determined that I'm the, if I'm going down, which I'm not, I will be fighting, swinging, and attacking. You're not just going to come in and take over. Not going to happen. Because, because if God is for me, who and what could possibly be against you? Think about that. When you meditate on those things, there's nothing that will cause you to be intimidated. There's nothing that will cause you to fear. There's nothing that will cause you to doubt. Nothing. Faith people, the minute something comes up and we see a conflict, we don't look at it as, oh my gosh, again. No, we look at it as an opportunity to whip my, my, my sword out. about it 
right? We get excited about it. We don't sit home and say, oh, God, I can't take anymore. No, nah, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm strong in the Lord. That's, that's why I can do these things. I am strong in the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Shall renew their strength. Not many people waiting on the Lord. And that's why they're not strong and worn out. You don't, you don't fight this battle on your own. It's not a natural battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. But as we seek God, as we surrender and submit our desires to his and yield to his will, we'll get on our knees fast and we'll pray. And we'll come up strong and we'll come up victorious. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He said that to the disciples in the garden. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But we're strong in the Lord. And in his power, we put on our armor and we're ready for battle. We don't sit idly by hoping that we don't suffer any attack or hoping someone else and not me. That's not how faith people live. Faith people get up and they draw their sword and they attack onward, forward. No running back, running forward. We attack, get them in the morning. And attack the enemy. Let him know you're coming after him. That's what faith people do. Overcoming. Not once wondering if there's going to be defeat or failure. There is no defeat and failure. Not for those who are in Christ. Amen. Faith is a fighter. Fear is a flighter. Faith is a fighter. Fear is a flighter. Fear runs in, in terror. Faith attacks in terror. Faith attacks in terror. It comes against the spiritual wickedness in high places and tears them down like we're commanded to do. That's it. In this, in this world, this natural, physical world, we are to do a spiritual battle against the, the, the forces of darkness that run that are constantly trying to, to bring uh, depression, that are constantly trying to bring defeat, that are constantly trying to bring strife and division into your families and into our churches and into your job. These things are designed to destroy us. These are the works of darkness that we need to run to attack. Not hope, oh, Lord, this morning when I go to work, please let people be nice. Just please let them be nice. Please let them be nice today. I just, I, I can't deal with ignorant people. Please, I want them to be nice. That is in very ineffective prayer. prayer. All right? <laughs> people are not going to be nice. They're not going to be nice because they yield to the spirit of darkness. The spirit of this world. They don't know it. That's a byproduct of what they're yielding to. That is a battle that you need to get up in the morning and say, Devil, I bind your work, your spirit of strife that may try to come against me at my job today. And you cut it. It's, it's head right off. That's what you do. Devil... I bind your work of sickness in my family, in my life, in my church. I bind it today. I'm letting you know that I won't stand a split second for it. I see it come up, I'm going to cut its head off. That's faith, guys. That's how faith acts. That's how faith talks. It's fighting the good fight of faith. It's talking confidently and boldly just like that. Not... We have the weapons to do it. We are commanded to do it. It's not a suggestion. We are told to do this, to be strong in the Lord and to fight the good fight of faith, to lay hold, to hold fast and endure, not to mealy mouse around and tiptoe and, oh, you know, I don't want to pray too loud. The devil's going to hear me. 
and he might get mad, and then he's going to try to attack me some way. <laughs> he can't attack you. He may try. You turn around and whip your sword out. I ain't running from him. Yes. No. Well, yes, he, 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 he is moved and has access by things that we say. Not things that we think. Because, listen, you could think something, and that's why the Bible says to take your thoughts captive. Because when you think something, it's the doorway to say something. When you begin to think about something long enough, you'll begin to say it. And then once you say it, you're going to begin to do it. That's why I take no thought. Take no thought. If a thought comes, listen, we put on our helmet of salvation. I put my, my, my helmet goes on so that when these thoughts from the enemy try to come at me, I recognize them immediately and I cast them down. And I bring them into subjection to the word. They don't have any effect on me because I don't allow them to. Now, if I sit there and take the thought and play with it for a while and begin to meditate on it and begin to think about it and begin to reason, then he's going to keep coming with more thoughts and more thoughts. And now you have an open door, and now he's setting up a lofty position in your mind, and you're going to begin to say the things that you're thinking about. That's what the Scripture says. You're going to begin to start to say that. And your words give life. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. Our words give life to things that we experience in this life, whether good or bad. It does. We shape our situations by things that come out of our mouth. That's why the enemy constantly tries to attack our mind, comes to us with thoughts and suggestions and feelings, the physical senses. That's what he, this is, that's his area. That's his area. But we're strong in the Lord. We put our armor on. We put our, our, our battle uniform on so that we can stand against these things. So when thoughts of fear try to grip us, about something right away we could take that thought captive no god has not given me a spirit of fear devil it is written in second timothy chapter one in verse seven that god has not given me a spirit of fear so this fear is from you you have been defeated you're under my feet so in the name of jesus fear get out of here that's how you have to do it. That's what I just did right here is exactly how I do it when a thought comes to me that is contrary to the word. When fear tries to grip you, when he brings things. And you know what? How does fear come? It, it comes from things that we hear, things that we're seeing. You may not be thinking about something fearful at all. And then all of a sudden, a suggestion, you see something. And it'll come to your mind. Oh, man, I, hope, I, I don't ever want that to happen to me. Or what if that happens to my ch kids? Or what if this... These are real thoughts, real feelings, real suggestions. I'm not denying them. However, however, as real as they are, the power of God is more real than that. And if those thoughts go left unchecked and not dealt with, it will capture you. It will cripple you. It will. That's how it happens. And then, and then fear sits home doing nothing while faith is on the offense attacking. And then we begin to start to say the things that we're thinking. The fearful thoughts we start to come out of our mouths. And we end up giving life to this thing. We birth this thing into existence that, was, that started simply as a thought, as a suggestion. How important is it for us to take them captive immediately? If it's contrary to the word of God, fear and intimidation is the devil. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God has given us. So when anything comes to you that is contrary to that, it is our job to not play with it, not entertain it, not think about it for a little bit, 
but immediately bring it in line to what the word says. And God says, you are more than a conqueror. God says, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. You are healed because of his stripes. You are provided for according to his riches and glory. I'm in subjection to the master, so everything that he has belongs to me. I'm surrendered. Faith is a fighter. Fear is a flighter. Fear runs. Faith stays in fights. Faith will stay in fight. Fear will find the easiest way out. Out the hiding way, if you will. Uh, let, let's turn over to uh, to First Samuel chapter seventeen. Let's look at an example of a fighter. I love it. Let's look at an example of a fighter. Fighter, glory to God. Faith is a pursuer. Fear is a pursuee. <laughs> yes, the pursuer. Because the greater one lives inside of us. Amen. These are encouraging words. These are words that need to be, that we need to meditate on and get them from our head into our heart. And it will begin to control how you live. You'll begin to start seeing these things out of your mouth. And the very thing that you start saying shall come to pass in your life. Uh, we know the story is the story of David and Goliath. This is a perfect illustration of what we've just been talking about. A boy who was strong in the Lord, who, who, who pursued the things of God who did not fear it, his natural surroundings and natural circumstances. And, uh, and so the very first thing, in, without spending all the time reading this whole account, because um, we know the account anyway, but in verse 10 it says, uh, this, is, this, is before, uh, this is before David got to the battlefield, okay, in verse 10. And every day the Philistines would come out, the Israelites would come out on their side, and the Philistine army would taunt them. In verse 10 it says, Here and now I challenge the Israelite army. I dare you to pick someone to fight me. Verse 11, When Saul and his men heard this, they were terrified. Terrified. Fear. Fear gripped him. Um, has the enemy ever come to you and said something that caused fear? Sure. That's ex they heard. They heard. That's exactly right. See, faith does not look at what it can see or what it can hear. Because if we start to get our eyes on what the problem seems to be, what it looks like, what the experts are saying about it, what it'll cause us to be terrified. That's why when you when when you get a report that is not that is contrary to this. Pull out the real report Amen. and keep your eyes on what the Bible says about your situation. Amen. Because when you begin to hear the taunts of the enemy and you don't, you don't take them captive, it'll cause fear. It'll cause fear. And fear will always cause you to retreat. Fear will cause you to back down. Fear will cause intimidation. You know, you, you, you ever see a dog, and, and it's, it's horrible, but a dog that has been abused, you know, if you ever see a dog or around, the minute you raise your hand up, even if you're not, it right away, like they, 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 even kids, kids are the same way. Kids, people that have been abused, you know, it's intimidating to them. And, and fear will cause that kind of intimidation. The minute, that's why we have to purpose to get up in the morning and declare that, Satan, I'm coming after you today. I am not intimidated. I'm not going to back down and hope that this is just a good day with no problems. That'd be great, but that's not reality. We have an enemy that does not like us. I'm well aware of that. Is he well aware that you're not afraid of him? 
Is he well aware of the fact that you're coming after him? See, I want to wake up in the morning, and I want him to know, oh, man, Pastor Eddie's up now. <laughs> Something's going to happen. That's what I, not, not the other way, where I get up and say, oh, man, I just hope today's better than yesterday. No, I'm strong in the Lord. I, I, I came to do battle. I'm a warrior. Warriors fight. I came to fight. And I come here to sit around and do nothing. And, and now, now let's think about David and that segue into this. So when Saul and his men heard this in verse 11, they were terrified. Let's jump down to verse 20. Prior to that, we know that, uh, that David's father, Jesse, told him to go and see his brothers, check on them, bring back proof that you actually did see them and that they're doing well. Verse 20. So David got up early the next morning. He left someone else in charge of the sheep. He wasn't negligent. <laughs> he took care of his responsibilities, took the food, and went as his father Jesse had told him to. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelites were going out to their battle line, shouting the war cry. The Philistine and the Israelite armies took positions for battle facing each other. David left the food. Verse 22. David left the food with the officer in charge of the supplies and ran to the battle line. Say, run to the battle line. Run to the battle line. Went to his brothers and asked how they were getting along. Verse 23. As he was talking with them, Goliath came forward and challenged the Israelites as he had done before. And David heard him. <laughs> David heard him. Verse 24. When the Israelites saw Goliath, they ran away in terror. Look at him, they said to each other. Listen to his challenge. King Saul has promised to give a big reward to the man who kills him. The king will also give him his daughter to marry and will not require his father's family to pay taxes. Huge incentive here. David asked the men who were near him, what will the man get who kills this Philistine? Think about that. He heard something. He's like, wait, what? H hang on. S say that one more time. What will the man get? who kills this Philistine and frees Israel from this disgrace? After all, this is faith speaking. David, full of faith, a young boy. All he, he was just a shepherd, nothing special, if you will. He wasn't in five-fold ministry preaching around the world. He was tending sheep, faithful to do what he was to do. After all, he says, who is this heathen Philistine to defy the army of the living God? They told him what would be done for the man who killed Goliath. Now, verse 28, Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard David talking to the men. He became angry with David and said, what are you doing here? Who was taking care of those sheep of yours out in, the, out in their wilderness? Like all of a sudden now he became concerned about the sheep. Who's taking care of those sheep? You smart aleck, you. You just came to watch the fighting. This is what his older brother says to him. Verse 29, now what, have, now what have I done, David asked. Can I even ask a question? He turned to another man and asked him the same question. And every time he asked, he got the same answer. He asked again, wait, tell me again, what is going to happen to the man who kills this? He was being pumped up, man. He was meditating on the promise. He was looking at the promise, not the problem. Do you see that? He had to hear it again. And every time he heard it, he got more excited about it. What? No taxes? Marry the king's daughter? Sign me up. How can I go out? Let's do it. Some men, verse 31, heard what David had said, and they told Saul, who sent for him. See, faith will get, get you places. It gets, your, it gets attention. Faith will get some attention. So Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Your majesty, no one should be afraid of this Philistine. I will go and fight him. Think, just think about this for a minute. David was not saying this because of his own stature and because of his own ability. Clearly he wasn't. He was a kid. Never been in any kind of war. So what caused him to talk this way as if it was a guaranteed 
constantly fellowshipping with God, seeing God perform in his life. Your majesty, no one should be afraid of this Philistine. Uh, send, I'll go out and fight him. Like, what is wrong with you people? Like, he could not believe that they weren't convinced and confident that God would deliver them. He couldn't believe that. See, faith cannot be, when you get around doubt and you're a faith person, it irritates you. It'll irritate you because you can't believe that you're actually saying that, those things out of your mouth. Whew. Verse 34. Well, 33, it says, No, answered Saul, how could you fight him? You're just a boy, and he has been a soldier all his life. There's the doubt. There's the unbelief to come in and try to rob. 34, David said, Your majesty, I take care of my father's sheep. Anytime a lion or a bear carries off a lamb, I go after it, attack it, and rescue the lamb. <laughs> it's incredible. And if the lion or bear turns on me, I grab it by the throat and beat it to death. This is a boy. I have killed lions and bears, and I will do the same to this heathen Philistine who has defied the army of the living God. Do you see how, how the, the works of darkness ought to irritate a believer and a person of faith? This uncircumcised Philistine is defying the name of his God causes you to rise up strong in faith. So he had this faith because he had seen the Lord deliver a lion and a bear into his hand. The Lord does the same thing for us if we'll step out in faith like David did. Amen. If we'll be on the offensive, ready to attack, not ready to run. Not, not, not ready to wring our hands in, in depression and worry and, and fear. Oh, how are we going to pay this bill? Those are legitimate feelings. However, they should not control us. We should declare exactly how the bills are going to get paid. God is my source. He is El Shaddai. He meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So that's how the bill's getting paid. That's how it's going to happen. So I have killed the lions and the bears. The Lord has saved me from lions and bears, verse 37, and he will save me from this Philistine. Not, I hope he does. Not, there's a good possibility he's done it twice already. I'm thinking third time's a charm. None of that. None of that. He will. He will. Save me from this Philistine. I don't have anything to be afraid of. There's no fear at all. I'm full of faith. I know he'll deliver me. All right, Saul answered. I mean, what else can you say to that? <laughs> Go and the Lord be with you. He gave his own armor to David for him to wear, a bronze helmet which he put on David's head and a coat of armor. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and tried to walk, but he couldn't because he wasn't used to wearing them, and it was so heavy and cumbersome. I can't fight with all this, he said to Saul. I'm not used to it. So he took it all off. He took his shepherd's stick, and he picked up five smooth stones from the stream, put them in his bag with his sling ready, and he went out to meet Goliath. Are we waking up in the morning ready to meet the enemy? Are we ready to fight and attack the enemy? Not waiting, not, not, not being proactive. We're not to wait for an attack to come on us before we get up and do something. We need to go and let him know he's powerless over me. He's powerless over me. I'm not waiting for an attack to come on me to start fighting. You may try to sucker punch me. I'm aware of your tactics. But you can't sucker punch me. You know why? Because I'm chasing you. Do you understand that? 
Can you get sucker punched by your enemy if you're actively pursuing him? No. But if you're doing nothing, he could sneak up on you and hit you. Can't, can't, couldn't that happen? But if I'm pursuing him actively, he can't, he can't sneak up on me. I'm coming after him. The Lord has put that on my heart, and we need to get the revelation of that, that we are to get up, not passive, but active, pursuing the enemy. Not waiting for a battle. Don't, don't go looking to start a battle, but go after him. There's things that the enemy is doing in our, in our communities, in our, in our workplace, in our families, in our churches that need to be dealt with. Not when it arises and now we have a problem. Before we have a problem, we are to be proactive. Faith attacks. Fear reacts. Like a knee-jerk reaction. We do something out of own because we just got sucker punched. What was that? No, no. We don't get sucker punched because we're vigilant and we're pursuing our enemy. We're pursuing the enemy. Verse 48. Goliath started walking toward David again, and David ran. Say ran. ran. David ran quickly toward the Philistine battle line to fight him. David didn't run to his friends. David didn't run to somewhere else. David didn't run and hide. David ran to the battle line. Full of faith, already declared that the Lord will deliver me from this Philistine. Not wondering if it was going to happen. He was fully convinced that what the Lord said would come to pass. Verse 51. He, so, so then we know he reached into his bag, took out a stone, which he slung at Goliath, it hit him on the forehead and broke his skull. And Goliath fell face downward to the ground. It's the power of God. David didn't have any skill within himself to be able to do that. This man was full of armor. And the one spot, <laughs> the angel grabbed that stone and brought it full speed, Mach 3, right into his forehead and killed him. Coincidence? Absolutely not. Will God do the same thing for you when you pursue your enemy? Yes. He absolutely will. Is he able? Absolutely, unequivocally, more than able and more than willing. Are we absolutely, unequivocally committed and more than willing to step out and fight? Because if we do, the two of them coming together, going to have great results. So now, again, David ran to him, stood over him, took Goliath's own sword out of its sheath, and cut off his head and killed him. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, what did they do? They ran away. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will run from you. When he knows that you're getting up in the morning, Actively pursuing his works. He is not going to stand around and wait. He may challenge you, but the minute you stand strong in faith and you, you, you start speaking the word, he's going to run. He's going to go. Symptoms will go. Situations will change. May not happen that second. May not happen the next day. But you stay fighting the fight of faith and victory will manifest in your life. The answer will manifest in your life. It's a guaranteed thing. Now, we'll pick up again tomorrow. I have more to, to talk about with this. But I just wanted us to, to, uh, to understand the importance of being strong in the Lord. And, and being full of faith means that you are on the attack. Faith attacks. Faith does not sit by doing nothing. Faith without works... Faith without actions, faith not acted upon is not faith at all. Faith needs to pursue. Yes? yes. There's one thing that was overlooked. What two things does the enemy leave behind when you're running? Any enemy. No. He leaves behind property and he leaves people behind. 
That's true. The spoils. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And that property that we're saying that we have, yep. all those lands and stuff that belongs to us. Then we exercise God's original plan in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, have dominion over everything. That's right. That's exactly right. The spoils. Remember when Jehoshaphat went out and they sang? They said that they were, the, the, the Lord sent ambushments against them. In an impossible situation, they started attacking one another. They didn't even have to fight, the Israelites. And they were days gathering up the spoils. <laughs> gathering up the spoils. So I'll tell you what, it pays to obey God. It pays to walk by faith. It pays to trust the Lord. It pays to hear from the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. And when you hear, it pays to obey immediately. That's how good things come into our life. And when you disobey it is how bad things happen to us. It is how. It's the, it's the way it happens. It gives the enemy access. And through deception and fear and lies, we bring damage to our own, our own lives. But if we'll refuse that and stay on God's side and walk and live by faith and overcome by faith, we'll be victorious every time. Untouchable. You may have some scrapes, some bruises, but when I say untouchable, never defeated. Never defeated. Full of joy, full of peace. So then faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing the anointed word of God. Amen. So our faith has grown this morning. And it's going to continue to grow. And as we give ourselves to the word of God, continually we'll grow stronger, we'll overcome more. And we'll gather more and more like the, like the word has promised us. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet and we'll pray.